what is going on guys so today is gonna to be cool today I'm gonna to do another educational video for you guys because a lot of people have been asking me about certain types of snakes now the certain snakes the questions I get a lot um, I try I do my best to answer them I really do guys um, as you most of you guys know since I've been saying since I started my channel I'm very busy but today we are talking about the two snakes that I have in this cage right here now a lot of people ask me do I have cane breaks? Do I have timber rattlesnakes? Uh, do I ever plan on getting these snakes? I have two right here, and I'm going to pull them out and show them to you guys. All right, guys, so I'm going to start by pulling out this one that's right in front here. And I'm going to talk about these snakes because apparently a lot of people don't know too much about them. Now, both of these snakes are the exact same snake. Now, she's kind of stuck on the hook, so I'm going to leave her there. But I definitely wanted to talk about these because a lot of people don't know this. But timber and canebrake rattlesnake are the same exact snake, okay? Depending on where you come from is pretty much what you call them. Now, the northern part of where they are found, people call them timber rattlesnakes. The further south, of where you look where they're found, people call them canebrake rattlesnakes. Now the only difference in these snakes is actually their color. So right here I have two different ranged rattlesnakes. I have my female, which is the one I have here on the hook a little bit. If I can get this off of her. Very gentle. Now, the female, which is this one right here, I have had her since she was a little tiny itty bitty rattlesnake. Now this other one on the left side right here that is actually rattling his tail right now supposed to be a male I don't really think it is. I've had him for I want to say about a year now. Now these snakes are the same snake but he is a southern she is a northern version of this snake. As you can see the color difference she has more of a clay color to her because the higher up north you go here in the United States, um, you do, in their territory, excuse me, you do have red clay. She has that more of a red clay color, where you have this cane break here, who has more of a piney kind of color, or dead leaf color. Yes, she also has that color, but his is a little duller, versus hers being a little bit more red, yellow, kind of orangish color. Now, both of these snakes are roughly about the same age. They're almost identical in size. Um, again, I raised her since she was a little baby. I just got him a couple months ago. A good friend of mine gave me him for free. Um, he's actually the same guy that gave me the baby puff adders that I have. But I definitely wanted to show you guys these snakes because a lot of people keep saying, oh, you need to get these snakes. Why don't you have these snakes? Um, you know, but I do have them. They're both doing well. I haven't really handled her too much because she's been a very wiry snake since I got her. She's just now recently been calming down. I've been trying to work with her a lot more. Um, that's why I kind of stopped filming because I went back to doing what I used to do, which is actually spending time with my animals. Um, since I started the YouTube thing and everything else going on, I really haven't had the time. They're both rattling a lot right now. Again, right here, this is the male. He is actually the one not rattling, it is the female rattling. Um, now, he was supposedly wild caught. My buddy did give him to me because he was really super aggressive. Within a matter of a month, I had him very tame now. Um, I handled him very well. He just started rattling his rattle. I have kept them together. I, I had him in quarantine for my normal six week period that I put all my snakes in. Um, and then I actually kept them separated for another two months, but next to each other in cages. And then actually, after a while, I introduced them together, I kept an eye on them, make sure they're okay, and now they do live together. Um, now when it comes to feeding these guys, I do have to pull him out. He will not eat in the cage. I actually do need to feed him in the garbage can that they are sitting on. Um, because if he doesn't eat his food fast enough, little fatty here actually likes to well, eat his food. We are going to feed these guys. And why I'm feeding these guys, I'm going to talk about the venom of these rattlesnakes. 
Um, now most of the venom here in the United States for rattlesnakes is the same, but for these particular two, I'm going to give you guys all the info that I can on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put her back in the enclosure. As you can see, she's not even rattling right now. She is doing fantastic. Again, I've had her since she was a little baby. Very long time now, about, I don't know, about four years, so. Beautiful, beautiful female. I absolutely love this snake. So, I'm going to put her back in the cage because that's where she is going to eat. up for right now. Now I'm going to take him out. He's just trying to explore a little bit. Now, for a wild caught rattlesnake, he is amazing. He is very calm. So as you can see, he is not rattling right now. If you hear the rattle, that is actually the female exploring her cage because I moved around a little bit. Uh, I'm pretty sure I could actually I want you to stay right there. I can actually hold him with one hand, just like that. <laughs> Still being very careful, of course. So, that is the male, supposedly male, canebrake rattlesnake. I also think this one is actually a female as well. I do need to probe them soon, but I'm going to go ahead and put him in the garbage can. Beautiful, beautiful snake. Hey, where are you going? Hey, you're not supposed to come over and give me a kiss. You can see he's actually sitting on the middle part of the snake hook, not really doing it any justice. <laughs> Tyler, can you get the garbage can for me, please? So I am, I am keeping my arm in a striking range for him. Um, and I know he is new to my collection. But I do have a very odd connection with this particular snake because he is wild caught and how he has not shown any aggression to me at all. So I'm going to go ahead and put him right in there. And then I'm going to close this up. And then we're going to go to frost some rats. And then we're going to feed them. Alright guys, so I do have the infamous red bull right here. Now, I do have five, five rats to frost it. Um, these guys are a little bit smaller than a normal small rat that I do feed these guys, but it's okay. Um, now, these guys were actually donated to me. Um, I know I've been saying a lot lately I have some awesome fans. It's because a lot of my fans, you guys, have been helping me out with a lot of stuff. Um, with that being said, I did start a Patreon account. And I want to thank you guys. And so, love and appreciation for you guys so i'm going to be adding a lot of stuff to that patreon account i will put the link in the description for that but these guys were donated to me uh, with some other small rats from a guy that just started doing rats um, so really excited to be using these so big thank you to him for that i will put the link in the description for his uh instagram as well now guys canebrake rattlesnakes are pit vipers they are part of that pit viper family now these guys are ambush predators, so sometimes they'll sit for weeks waiting for something, some potential prey to walk by to be able to launch out and actually grab that prey item. Now when they do grab that prey item, they inject a lot of venom into that particular prey item and then they let go and that prey item runs off. And they do use their forked tongue like all snakes, um, which the reason why it's forked, in case some of you guys don't know, it goes out. It picks up scent glands in the air and then comes back into their mouth and immediately goes into the roof of their mouth into an organ called the Jacobson organ. Now, this is pretty much a computer to their brain telling them what that prey item is or where it went. So, they will then search out that prey item after it dies and start consuming it. Now, normally, their prey out in the wild consists of squirrels, um, voles, rats, mice, chipmunks even. These are some of the eastern coast of the United States most popular rattlesnake because they are everywhere. Now they don't necessarily hibernate because they are reptiles, but they will take a extended sleep, do say, um, because of the winter and in some of the areas they live, or a lot of the areas they live, it does snow. So we're gonna go ahead and feed this girl now. 
really exciting. I'm going to get a nice close-up for you guys so you guys can enjoy that. And we'll talk a little bit about her venom. Nice. Now she did nail this one, so I'm going to set that one right there. If you look very carefully right there, you can actually see blood coming out of the rat that was not there before. Her fang did pierce the rat, and now the blood is coming out because it is warm and is moving around in there. Now I'm going to grab the second rat, which if it does bite it, you're not going to see it because this one is black. I'm going to go ahead and put that right here. Now she knows this is a different rat, so you see the tongue going again. Let's see if I can get her to strike this one too. She might not. The other day when I fed her, she did strike both of them rats. So, alright, so I'm going to set that right there. I'm going to go ahead and close this glass up a little bit. So now she is normally would be waiting for her prey to die, even though it is right here in front of her. She's going to fix her fangs from the initial bite. You'll see her moving her mouth a little bit. But then once she feels nice and comfortable, she will actually then go ahead and start eating these rats. Rattlesnake venom is used for feeding and defense only. Cambrake rattlesnake venom is highly evolved and varies extensively throughout the species range. There are multiple types of venom patterns associated with this species. Snakes' venom varies in many ways between each species of rattlesnakes and it has steadily changed over time, especially with the lethality and pharmacological effects of the venom. The most notable change have been in the Mojave rattlesnakes, the South American rattlesnakes, and the timber rattlesnakes. These snakes' venoms have an extremely effective and potent neurotoxin, unlike most other rattlesnakes which have serious hemorrhagic effects on the prey and the body of the human. Snake's venom even changes over the course of its life. It can go from a potent neurotoxin to a highly potent hemotoxin effect. Now crowfrab is the common North American anti-venom does not actually use the Crotalus horridus venom in its polyvent mixture, instead relying on Scutellitus to neutralize the neurotoxins. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this, you found it educational. Um, big shout out again to Hollywood Rodents. I will be putting his Instagram in the description below. He donated 20 small rats to me, so again, thank you for that. Um, again, if you guys you know want to help me out with some projects and stuff, I'm going to be working on my Patreon account, so I'll be updating and adding some tiers to that stuff. So again, I will be putting the link for that also in the description of this video, so you guys can check that out. Also, if you guys want to check out my photography, I'll put the link in that description as well. So you guys can check that stuff up. I did get some more stuff uploaded to that. Um, later this week, I will be announcing the contest for you guys um, with the prizes as well. So remember, guys, subscribe if you aren't already. Smash that like button if that's what you like to do. And, and I will see you guys 
in the next video. Bye!